And now a prayer for listening hearts and minds. Holy wisdom, help us to hear afresh your word today, that we might truly live in your ways, the ways that nurture life for all people and all of creation. Amen. Our first scripture reading today is Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 and 16, which shares with us the ninth of God's ten words to guide us toward life-giving and thriving community. Let us listen carefully for God's wisdom and leading. Then God spoke these words, You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Our second scripture reading today is Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, which shares some of the Apostle Paul's guidance to early followers of Christ in the ancient city of Philippi. This passage comes as Paul starts to wrap up the letter he wrote to them from prison. Let us listen again for God's wisdom and leading. Finally, beloved, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And so friends, as we turn to reflect on these words of scripture, please pause for a word of prayer with me. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So as indicated by our relatively thriving garden, we are nearing the end of our summer series exploring God's 10 words for a thriving, life-giving life for all and for community. We've come, as Pastor Laura and Jean shared with us, all the way to that ninth word. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Perhaps we thought we'd already gotten through the most challenging ones with that do not commit adultery and do not steal, but I at least confess that I find this ninth word among the most difficult to uphold at all times. Anyone with me? A few truthful folks, that's good. This ninth word reminds us of the sacredness and power of speech and calls us to speak truth not only in courts of law, but in all of life. So often we treat speech trivially, but as Joan Chittister reminds us, speech is not trivial, but sacred. Speech is sacred because it is God-like. It creates our world. Recall that in the first creation story in Genesis, God speaks creation into being. Speech gives life or takes it. It promises and guarantees or makes the world a harsh place to be. It builds trust and community or it destroys them, to speak is to make a reality. So it's no wonder that God gave clear instruction about speech as God sought to guide the people to live in a new reality of freedom and flourishing for all. In Israel's early life, as Pastor Eugenia Ann Gamble writes, God recognized that it would be impossible for the community to hold together without a bedrock of trust in the system of justice. If one lies in court, justice becomes impossible, and without justice, community becomes impossible. 
But even more than that, as Pastor J. Ellsworth Callas explains, the Jewish people also understood that the ninth word was meant to apply to the whole realm of human relationships, covering all forms of slander, defamation, and misrepresentation. And it applied not only to individuals, but also to groups, racial groups, faith groups, groups of any kind. So while some think that biblical translations and paraphrases of this verse that say, do not tell lies about others is an oversimplification, I think they actually move us toward the heart of the ninth word. For they name and acknowledge the reality that lies and gossip have far-reaching effect whenever and wherever they are told or spread, whether inside of a court or outside of a court. Leonard Felder, a nationally recognized psychotherapist and shares a famous Jewish Hasidic story about the danger and far-reaching impact of lies and gossip. In this story, he tells of a student who has been saying hurtful things about his teacher and spreading untrue gossip. Eventually, the student feels guilty about this and goes to the teacher to ask for forgiveness. The teacher suggests, if you want to make amends for what you've done, I recommend taking several feather pillows, cutting them open, and letting the wind disperse the feathers. The student does as he is told and returns to the teacher, who says calmly to the student, now there is one more step. Go and gather up all the feathers. <laughs> yep. The student replies, but how can I do that? It's impossible. The winds have scattered them in every direction. And the teacher explains, now, now you are beginning to learn about the power of words. Once you have started to repeat a hurtful rumor and it spreads in all directions, it is very difficult to try to undo all the damage. Sadly, most of us probably know from personal experience just how true that is. I know I have both felt the stinging pain of gossip and slander and failed at other times to uphold the truth for others, thus bearing false witness against a neighbor. And like many, I've done so not only through my words, but also, and perhaps more often, through my silence. For as Pastor Callas writes, one of the most subtle forms of false witness is inappropriate silence. If we sit in silence while a reputation is being discredited, when we know the truth or have good reason to question what is being said, we become party to slander and to the destruction of that person. Silence is not always golden. Sometimes it is criminal, Callas writes. This reminds us that God's ninth word doesn't just call us to speak truth when we choose to speak. It calls us to speak truth whenever it is needed to further justice and beloved community, to further life-giving and thriving community for all. We are called to speak truth whenever untruths are being spread, whether that's on social media, in public discourse, in the grocery store aisle, around the games table, or around the family dinner table, which is sometimes the most challenging place of all to speak truth. But there and everywhere that truth is needed, God's ninth word calls us to speak it and to do so in a spirit of love, not 
fluffy, sentimental, take the easy route, love, but love that calls us to be our best, most honest selves, even when that is uncomfortable or deeply challenging to us or to others. I'll be the first to say that it is not always easy to speak truth. And it's very rarely comfortable to speak the truths that really, really need to be heard by ourselves and others. So the Apostle Paul's wise guidance to early followers of Christ in Philippi is well worth remembering as we consider when, where, and how we are called to speak. Listen again to Paul's guidance, which Jean read for us just a little while ago. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Think about these things and speak truth. Trusting that just as lies and gossip can be like feathers scattered on the wind which can never fully be retrieved, so too can words of truth spoken in love be healing waves that ripple out in all directions. As Pastor Gamble writes, words spoken with integrity out of love and not self-interest can be direct encounters with divine love and set in motion healing that unfolds over years. Truth heals those who honestly want it. Beloved people of God, in a time when truth is more difficult than ever to ferret out, and so many believe that we are inextricably inextricably bound to current patterns of existence that threaten destruction to both people and the planet, let us lean into God's love, speak truth, and join the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in the belief he affirmed while accepting the 1964 Nobel Peace Prize that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word. By God's grace and power, may it be so. Amen. <laughs>